All right, Sisters fans, this is my review for Season 5, Episode 7, Ego Trip. Now, yeah, I, I made it clear during my live stream that I was taking a break for the holiday. Did me some good, but the month is coming to a close, and you know me, I want to get numbers as well as, well as ad revenue maximized prior to December. And, uh... This was an all right episode. It's like I tweeted out Wednesday night. Had the episode ended the moment Zach and Fatima left Karen's apartment, I would have been fine with that. Really, that, that would have been it. 10 out of 10, great scene. So I'll talk about that stuff last. Let me just get the redundant stuff out of the way, which was really the main reason this episode didn't get a 10 out of 10. Anything non-related to the Zach Karen stuff was just a waste of time. I mean... Q had what? Crackheads, groupies, thugs, who you name it. They were up in the apartment just raiding the place when Calvin came in and kicked everybody out. I, I did kind of laugh when, uh, what was it, that one chick had like the microwave and, you know, uh, uh, people were grabbing other stuff and just running. I feel nothing for this because Calvin and Maurice had a full season to get Q out, have him arrested and whatnot, but they just decided to do nothing. Didn't call the police, didn't do anything. And now, <laughs> and I wish somebody would explain this to me. So because Calvin's name isn't on the least, least he can't kick you out. Yet Calvin literally said, hey, I called the cops because you have that bracelet on and here you are doing drugs and everything like that. Yet Q counters that with saying, well, you can't, you can't get me kicked out because... You name it on the lease. And I'm like, I'm no expert when it comes to this stuff about probation and whatnot. But with that collar on and everything. And didn't Logan say he needs to like clean his act up, get a job and everything prior to testifying in court. So he doesn't look like a, you know, a criminal. Um, Something tells me if he gets busted for doing drugs and everything like that. Couldn't he get locked up again? So my question is, how could Calvin calling not allow that to happen? I mean, like when... Q was taunting him about, you know, <laughs> yeah, even if you call, you don't know who you need to talk to. And I'm like, yeah, that's right, because he got Logan on his side. But no, that wasn't even brought up. He just brought up, I guess, squatters rights or something like that. And it makes no sense. So, folks, even though, you know, Calvin's room got raided, his dead dad's golf clubs were taken except for one. He's like, he sold the golf clubs for $75, but they were over a thousand. But you know, the TV and all, it was basically using that as currency for drugs and the, all the food's gone. And like when he's like, all the food's gone, I know ain't nobody going in my room. Again, I don't feel sorry for him. I don't. It, it, I don't feel sorry for Calvin. Don't feel sorry for Maurice. Just no. I mean, this was a dumb storyline and this was a waste of time. It really was. All right. Um... Getting back to the apartment or Danny's apartment, Jonah's being too awkward, semi-aggressive with Danny, who's fighting off his advances. Like, no, no, this ain't. I, I got to go. The phone's ringing. So she goes to the restroom to call Andy and tells her about, you know, the situation <laughs> or actually, you know, asking Andy about the Serena situation. And it's like, yeah, you know, well, um, I was able to make a call and tomorrow morning go over there to see her. And then, you know, she's bringing up the whole current situation with this guy in her apartment and Andy's like look you should just go call Preston because you're too scared to be are you scared of being alone and I'm thinking Andy you're the last person to try to call someone out for being scared or unwilling to be alone you know it's just in a matter of fact in the midst of the conversation ding dong oh Gary's here I gotta go so basically she's like get that man out of your place and call Preston and Danny's like no I'm, I'm no I'm not going to do that and to be honest, call it an ego thing, but honestly, no. I She she shouldn't call, and Preston shouldn't be involved with her either. He should just be gone, either end up with uh, Mindy or whoever that girl's name was, and go about his life, because he deserves better than Danny. As she comes out of the restroom, I think uh, Jonah accidentally calls Danny Susie. I don't know if that's the name of his ex-wife or what, but... Essentially, he asked her, he, she asked him to leave about, look, it's not you, it's me. And then he gets a bit pissed off because, you know, at first he's like, oh, wow. Um, didn't think I'd be that bad. And it's like, no, no, it's not you, it's me. And then, you know, as he's getting dressed, he's like, y'all, y'all bitches are all alike. What, um, bitches? 
yeah, you you know, you got me hot and bothered and then you just send me home. <laughs> so yeah, let me just say this. Now I'll do a separate video about the Danny slap thing. Trust and believe I will. But for now, let me just say, just like with Calvin in the Q situation, I don't really feel bad. I, let me put it this way. Do I think she deserved to get slapped? No. Did I think Jonah was in the right for calling her out of her name? Absolutely not. But this was one of those times where... And look, I know it seems like I'm victim shaming. It's like, well, see, you're a man. It's like, you're saying Danny is at fault. If she didn't do this, if she didn't do that. Well, a couple of things. One, bringing a man you barely know to your home. Two, this guy straight up said at the bar, you know, what he was after. You know, some ass. And it's like, you know, if you didn't want to give it up. Again, not trying to victim shame, but Jonah was laying out, you know, what his intentions were. Yet you still, you know, let it happen. It would have been different if, let's say, we saw them about to leave the bar. Danny was, you know, persistent at saying you're not coming home with me. And then Jonah came. But no, the way it was framed was she was accepting of him coming over because of the way she opened the door and let him come in. So there's that. And then another, she just had to keep running that mouth. It's like, yeah, he was wrong for calling you out of your name. But then when you like mention his chocolate rod being more like a, you know, toothpick or whatever, just making fun of how short he is, that led to a slap. And the way he turned around like Ike Turner and what's love got to do with it. You know, that Lawrence Fishburne meme where it's like he just turns around, looks and it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, I'm not saying she deserved to get slapped, but. She should have read the room. Even she's like, Danny, do you try it? Don't do it. It's like, yeah, let the dude talk his shit, get the rest of his clothes on and leave. Again, I'm not saying he was right for calling her out of her name, but it's like, you just had to keep going. You just had to keep going. And now you got slapped. And that's how the episode ends. Now, there are a couple other things to talk about in regards to like Andy. And I'll get to that really quickly. Uh, for starters, we jump over to a bar Hayden still talking to shit about how you know yeah Fatima wanted him and whatnot you know it's the same old same old I mean even Gary isn't buying it but then it's brought up to his attention that um Hayden's dude at Benson confirmed that Robin is up to his eyeballs and leverage acting like he's a big shot and Gary at the same time is like look okay this is intriguing Hayden but I don't think we should underestimate him it's like what we're smart too right okay so then ask about andy and uh from there you know gary knows that she's at home waiting for him you know waiting for him to call her and it just goes to show how pitiful andy is at this point where the manipulator knows how to push andy's buttons and it just shows you andy don't know it's like what was it a couple seasons ago when she was like uh or was it this season i forgot which whichever one it was when it was the whole thing about Robin's going to stay here a week. And it's like trying to manipulate the manipulator. It's not going to work. But then Hayden and, you know, Gary make a bet involving shares where it's like you call and she says, yes, come over. Hayden, you give me three. If I call and she says, no, Hayden, I'll give you three. But, you know, he calls and he says, yes, I can't stay up late. I got work to do. I got to get to work early in the morning. Okay, okay, okay. But I'll just be over there for a little bit. So, you know, he goes over there. But Hayden's like, look, look, look. Are you sure she ain't playing you? Nah, man, she ain't playing me. So when Hayden said that, I'm like, I wonder what that means. Because he did mention the whole thing about, you know, one minute she's trying to sue you. Then you go over there, have sex, and, you know, everything's cool. But, again, it's a good, um, I guess you could say, plot point of, is Andy playing him? But Gary does come over. And, you know, Andy notices how horny he is and they start kissing. But um, then she's like, wait, what made you change your mind? I just realized how stupid all this was, you know, in terms of their fights, their back and forth. And then um, again, she mentions like, you know what? We can't mess around too long. I got to go to sleep, go to work early. So, you know, makes him go in there to take a shower. And um, he just throws his blazer on the table. And when he's in there taking a shower, she picks it up, picks some paperwork out of his pocket which i believe is some sort of contract maybe it's a copy of the contracts that robin was signing so after reading it she's quickly able to deduce that oh no that the contract is something involving the robin scheme which is interesting because with robin being a high power you know lawyer and whatnot owning a firm it makes me believe even more that i'm like 
yeah, there's no way that, you know, Hayden and Rob, I mean, Hayden and Gary could get one over on Robin in terms of contracts. So for Andy to just pick up a paper and like in 15 seconds deduce that they're trying to dupe Robin, it's weird. But again, I could be wrong. But then again, that paperwork is the only the paperwork. If it involves Robin, it's the only thing that makes sense for Andy to give that kind of reaction. So I pretty much talked about all the boring stuff, the Andy storyline, the Danny storyline, the Q and um, Calvin stuff I didn't care about. So we're going to talk about the stuff that you all want me to talk about, which is involving Karen's apartment. And no lie, I'm not really going to go into the full ins and outs of the apartment in this video. I will do a separate video about it. But um, yeah, so Fatima comes in and um, no apology. No apology. Karen calling and cur cursing her out, calling her all out, uh, calling her out of her name multiple times. No apology for that. But let me put it this way. So Fatima comes in, greets everyone. Karen just as sassy and bitter as ever. It's like, oh, hello, Fatima. Welcome to my home. And it's like, oh, wow. So, you know, Zach is all fed up with this letter stuff. He doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Like I said, I'll do a separate video breaking down the letter and everything. But s simply put, I did not like the way Zach was portrayed in this scene at all. Not at all. Completely immature. I understand he's frustrated and fed up, but all I can think about is the way could the way that Zach conducted himself for the past few episodes at Karen's apartment. Go back to Zatima episode two. Season one, episode two. When Belinda came over to, you know, the house, was acting an ass, running her mouth and everything the entire night. Go back to that dinner table scene. And you can argue like the most immature thing Zach did was uh, flipping Belinda off with his middle finger under his eye like he's pulling it down. But the calm, cool, and collected way he shut Belinda down and, you know, nicely told off of everybody at the table, that Zach wouldn't have put up with the crap. Or, well, maybe I should say that Zach would not have reacted the way he did during this scene. And now I rewatched it and I'm like... Miss Lisa and Fatima were the best parts. I mean, I cringe when Miss Lisa was, you know, introducing herself to Fatima, why she put this whole meeting together because, you know, do you have children? And then Karen was like, no, like Fatima couldn't answer the question. And that was like a double blow because remember, yeah, Karen was like, oh, she ain't got kids because she's pregnant. But then on the other hand, from Fatima, we know that, yeah, she doesn't have kids because Ian made her get an abortion. So... Karen just don't know. But in any case, and like I said, I, I don't, there's a lot to say about this scene, but I'd rather have a separate video breaking it down. So please bear with me. So overall, Miss Lisa is just, you know, and when you have kids, you do anything for them. And then when they hurt, you hurt. So I don't want my baby to deal with all this pain and stress. I'm just sitting there like, Miss Lisa, you have no freaking idea how much pain and shit your daughter has caused mainly to Zach, but still. And then I love it when Fatima sat down and then Zach was like, I didn't know you were coming. Well, are you going to kiss me? So then Zach kissed her. And then the way that <laughs> Karen rolled her eyes and everything was crazy. But long story short, Fatima makes it known that, oh, well, I have a page I'd like to read too. Basically saying like, okay, well, Karen is going to say her thing. And then you know, everybody else will. So I did like the fact that Miss Lisa made it clear that Karen's going to read her letters and everybody else will have a chance to talk. I saw it on Oprah and I love it because later on in the scene, it's like Miss Lisa came with his Oprah stuff, but you have Fatima smiling like Tabitha Brown. And, you know, she was bringing that Sasha fierceness up in there laying down the law. But Karen reads her letter and what made me bust out laughing was like the, the video I did last week about, you know, Ebony posting Karen's letter to Zach online. And I read it in the Karen voice and I said, yeah, my impression is off. But when I heard her read it, I'm like, yo, I sounded just like her. So she goes through the letter and I'm just, and then Zach is, you know, pissed off. So he keeps interrupting and Fatima's there to kind of keep him in check, which while I appreciate Fatima doing that, I just hate it for Zach to be this way. So, you know, he can't take being bashed like this. And I can understand that. I, I mean, who would want to sit through that shit? But at the same time, Karen's letter is so confusing because for someone who put you through so much pain and, you know, his deception and all this other stuff and the cheating and the lies, 
and you hoping he would get better and better, you know, as time went on. It's just that what what were you expecting? You 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 claim to hate everything he did to you, but you still want to have his baby. I, I don't understand how that makes sense. Like make it make sense to me. But on top of that, you know, she finishes the letter and Zach, you know, goes off like, you know what, I paid her seventy five thousand it was seventy seven. I paid her seventy five thousand dollars. That wasn't enough. When I tell you I was Karen could have oh man, that this woman is delusional and it's ridiculous. But more to the point. Miss Lisa asked Zach, do you want to say anything? I have nothing to say. And that pissed me off because what Zach could have said to shut the whole thing down was you had me arrested for wrongly accusing me of stealing your credit card. Miss Lisa's head would have been like exploded. Like what the you did all this? Miss Lisa does not know everything going on. She just knows her baby is stressed out, but she doesn't know that she's the cause of it. So Aaron, you know, goes on about, you know, not wanting to compete with Zach and, you know, wanting to make it work. And Zach is just such an asshole, you know, bringing up his wife, committing, you know, taking her own life in front of Karen and just it, it was stupid. Zach had no reason to interrupt. I hated how Zach was at him and Karen were acting like school kids for real. And I've seen and there have been mature, you know, like kids in the family, like 10 and whatnot, who conducted themselves with more maturity than these two. So, yeah, so it, it just kills me that he was given the opportunity to talk and he didn't say anything. But here's the thing, even though I really love when Fatima uh, got Miss Lisa to see who Karen really is, I don't think it was fair. Not 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 the Fatima bit, but I think Miss Lisa inviting the guys to come over and whatnot. He, he, I know Zach would hate this, but if Miss Lisa said, well, with everything going on and Karen being pregnant, I want to make sure we settle this tension and whatnot. So I'm going to have her write letters expressing how she feels. And I'd like you two to do the same, like write how you feel about either Karen or just this situation in general so we can put it all out there and move forward. But the fact that, you know, they and Aaron, like I said, he just feels like a not just a cardboard cutout at this point. He's just going to be so agreeable that there's really no point in talking about him in terms of what what would Aaron's letter say? And we've already been through this with him. You know, he even wrote that. What was it that? portrait he drew of Karen and all of them were like affirm every line was like a line of affirmation and some other bull nonsense but basically Zach could have wrote like a little list of all the things that Karen did that was freaked up to him and then that would have been a wrap but Fatima shut it down basically mentioning you know Karen calling her out of her name and I love the because remember when she mentioned like and let's talk about the word bitch and Miss Lisa's like well where are we going this Miss Lisa right please let me let me hear me out and i'm like okay this this is cool because i'm like all right miss lisa like back off now you every time zach wanted to leave or whatever or he, he wanted to talk you stopped him but you just sit back but i like the fact miss lisa respected fatima's request and then listen so basically the fact that hey i'm not going to hurt your baby i made that clear if it is zach's number two coming up on over um you and zach are over you're done so stop popping up at the house wait you're doing that and I love how Miss Lisa did that. I'm like, yes, because remember, I said, Miss Lisa, when she comes over there, I hope she allows the other guys to talk. And I hope it's revealed that Karen is the one causing a lot of this mess. And she literally shut it down. And then we go over to the the B word and the fact that, you know, our people use the N word and, you know, we use the B word. But when it comes to someone who isn't our friend and whatnot, then it's a call to war. And just to let you know, the expiration date of me being nice about it and not calling you out of your name without you calling me out of my name first is over. It's like, you know what else is expired? You're welcome in my home. And it's like, fine, I'll leave. But I'm glad that Fatima <laughs> laid down the law. And the funny thing is, even though Zach wanted to leave and had nothing to say, every time Fatima like dropped a bomb, he was like, yep, mm-hmm. Wait, you're doing that? Yeah, yep, Miss Lisa, she is popping up over at the house. And yep, me and her are over. So basically from there, Karen just... You know, Miss Lisa's like, you know, wait, you're doing all that? Well, hey, you, you can't be calling people out of their name like that. And you should apologize. And Karen didn't do it. Like her mom was always saying, look, you need to look her in the eye and tell her you're sorry for what you did. And it's like, whose side are you on? I'm on the side of right. And I'm like, Miss Lisa, that is what the hell I'm talking about. Miss Lisa is the MVP. But basically from there, Karen is like, well, I'm not supposed to be stressed out. Mama, there's a lot you don't know. And I'm like, yeah, there's a lot she doesn't know. 
even more the hell you raised. Like I said before, getting um, Zach arrested, putting out his grandfather's things on the curb, cursing out Fatima on multiple occasions, just causing mayhem all the time. And not to mention getting breaking up with Zach before he even got with Fatima. You got with Aaron first. So there's a lot more Miss Lisa didn't know, which is why I wish Zach had held his composure and maturity in order to shut it all down. So then Karen plays the victim of, oh, nobody's on my side. So I thought I wasn't supposed to be stressed. Y'all get out of my house. And she just runs away. And basically this counteracts what she said last week about Zach. Let him go, ma. That's what he does. Every time he hears something he doesn't like, he wants to leave. Look at you now, Karen, because your ass is getting exposed. Yeah, because your mom knows you're not the victim here. You're the one who's causing a lot of this trouble. And now that, you know, your trump card is gone, she's on the other player's side. Now you want to quit. So from there, uh, she leaves. And Fatima, as Miss Lisa said, she really is cool. You know, apologizes for the situation, how awkward this is. But karen is you know lucky to have a mom like you and for what it's worth i hope everything works out but if she really wants to figure out whose baby who the baby daddy you know do the timelines of you know counting 10 days and this and that and i don't know what the hell a separate video well long story short fatima's about constructing a timeline aaron's like you know it's close but we don't know it was the same week and remember they mentioned ultrasound and I'm most surprised Zach didn't react to that because Fatima's was like, did you know? He's like, nope. And I'm like, yeah, this is a perfect opportunity to showcase that, yeah, there was a test and there is a chance that Zach isn't the father. Yes, I know Zach always believed that, but at the same time, it was never given confirmation from that from medical professionals. Only Aaron and Karen and Miss Lisa knew that and Andy, I believe. And I think the other girls, I forgot. Yeah, but in any case, they leave. And, um... We got Miss Lisa talking to Karen, who feels gutted by the situation, but I don't know why she feels... The only reason she's crying and whatnot is because her ass was exposed. Now her mom knows that she's been raising as much hell as the stress she's been, you know, dealing with. But long story short, she agrees that Fatima's cool, mentions the B word, don't be using it like that. And she vouches for Aaron loving her, but at the same time, he seems too good to be true. And it's like, yeah, I know. That's what I've been feeling. And then Miss Lisa says, could that be the reason you're still stuck on Zach? Because you're unsure about the unknown. And that's about Aaron, you know, and what he could be hiding. So you're clinging on to Zach. And that just gave her something to think about. But um, again, if you go back to season two, it just feels weird because it didn't seem like that at all. So in any case, she does mention how... um. You're still going to be on bed rest. It's doctor's orders. But uh, if you're good, then I might let you go down to the salon for about half an hour tomorrow just to check things out to make sure everything is OK, which is kind of weird, because what if I'm not mistaken, didn't Pam come over that morning? So it's literally only been one business day where Karen isn't there yet. She's freaked out. But then again, if you left Pam in charge, I'm pretty sure you'd be worried, too. All right. So from there, um, we go over to Fatima. And Zach in bed, she's been quiet. She looks good in that gown, though. She's been quiet most of the night. Basically, uh, Madam was the one who talked her into going, which, again, I wish we would have seen that in the last episode. Uh, but she kind of vouches for Karen in a way that she believes everything she said about Zach while they were together. But, you know, he's better now in the present and the fact that, you know, she understands where Karen's coming from because relationships are an investment. And there is some truth behind that. But when you look at Karen and all of her actions, it really doesn't make sense. Like you took a bum off the street, thought he'd be a Prince Charming or the, nef the or the next Jeff Bezos. And it didn't work out <laughs> because you constantly you. That's the thing about the letter. It's like she said, I kept giving you money. I kept forgiving you and taking you back. Yeah, Karen, you chose to do that. Nobody made you do that. So w you're calling him a fool, but you're the fool who is insane because you keep doing the same thing expecting different results but long story short Fatima's like you know what I'm reaping the benefits of the investment she made I do like how Fatima was using analogies and whatnot this is the Fatima I like to see not this you know passive aggressive you know Fatima we've gotten for a majority of season five not believing Zach doesn't love Karen not you know um shutting stuff down like I hated that Fatima this Fatima here this is the one I like so um in any case and also, I forgot to mention this in my over review, but Priscilla was acting just like Fatima early on this season with Sam. You say you didn't sleep with anybody else but the Victoria and that one girl you cheated on me with back in the day. But I don't believe you. So what you, What the hell you asked me for? 
You want, I want to figure this out. Yeah, whatever. But he told you, but you don't believe him. So what does it matter? So in any case, yeah, Fatima is basically like, you know, talking about how, um, Karen, I hope she heard me basically. Yeah. Cause if she didn't, she's going to be fucked up. But in any case, I love how Zach asked her, wait, what about the, uh, the timeline stuff? Like, how do you know about that? And I'm thinking, oh, is she going to mention the Ian thing? But no, she basically says, baby, I did some research. Oh, okay. So then they go to sleep or actually have sex. So that was the episode as a whole. Um, like I said, I really wish Zach was portrayed to be a bit more mature than he was during that scene. But overall, it was pretty good, but anything non-related to the Karen's apartment thing was a bore, so that's it. But like I said, I have more in-depth discussion videos I'll be doing over the next few days. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday, everybody's going back to work slash school Monday, so I'll be able to get more videos done, maybe even tomorrow. So with that being said, thanks so much for tuning in. I do appreciate the support on the channel. What did you think of Ego Trip? I'm just glad that Karen is softly getting exposed i say softly because you know there could have been a hard you know book drop you know fatima said she had a page but it felt like she had an encyclopedia she wanted to drop on their asses and i'm just so glad miss lisa was willing to hear what was going on and i really wish that came you know more mature and like laid it out not just the money but the fact that hey your daughter had me arrested this and that but hey we'll just have to wait and see how things play out but thanks so much for tuning in like and subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one